In today's video, I am going to give you the basics and more advanced tactics that you can use in the low post. So let's get down, let's check out how you can play the low post in basketball. So the two most important things when it comes to the low post in basketball is not necessarily about your size. It's actually mostly about your footwork as well as positioning and knowing your angles. And what I mean by this is a lot of younger players, when they get told to sit down in the low post, they will be down here basically right on the block because that's generally where their coach will tell them to play and they won't know what to do. What you'll see in a lot of youth sports or at least a lot of youth basketball is they'll be standing here like this, kind of looking around saying, okay, what do I do? Oh yeah, I need to go screen for this guy over here but they're not actively trying to post up. And I think that's a massive mistake. I think a lot of coaches need to teach their players how to play the low post if they're getting stuck down here. So number one, yes, you can start on the low block. I generally like to start roughly at that first hash mark above that block because this is going to give us a little bit more room. From there, when you receive that pass, you should hop out and land on both feet at the same exact time. You should be about, I would say, three to four feet away from the key and one to two hash marks up from the block. This is kind of the sweet spot when it comes to low post moves because now, if you were to face up to the rim, you would be able to see the angles that you're going to have. You're going to be able to do different back to the basket and face up moves. And it just overall gives you a better option when trying to post up players. Because this is actually a very good area and fun area to score on the court. There are two different types of low post moves. There are face up moves as well as back to the basket moves. Basically what a back to the basket move is, is when you get that ball and your back is literally towards the basket. Meanwhile, a front facing move or a, when you get it, face up move is when you're facing towards the rim. At that point, that would be a face up move. And there's different options that can come out of both of these. However, how can you figure out when to be a face up move or know when to use face up moves versus back to the basket moves? And that answer can be a little bit difficult to really explain because of course, when you get that ball, your basket all already going to be to the basket. And when it comes down to it, if your player's really playing tight on you, that is generally when most coaches and trainers will say, that's when you want to do a face-up move. Meanwhile, if they're giving you maybe a foot of space or they're not actively trying to push you out of the key, you can turn around and you can do a face-up move. However, you can still do a face-up move when a player is really trying to push you away. And it actually gives you a couple of different options and kind of a couple of different looks for the defender to try and defend against. So let's go through a couple of different options. So number one, when you get that ball and you hop out your backs to the basket, if your player is defending you super hard along the baseline, which means like he's right here and you literally have nothing on this side, guess what? Quick spin move and attack the basket, you're going to be there in one dribble, two steps, and you're going to be able to score easily. On the flip side, if your defender is really trying to force you baseline, which means that he's really overplaying you on this side, literally playing you like right there, at that point in time, you can just easily spin off and you have the basket as well. See, what happens down in the low post is a lot of players will overthink what they need to do. It'll actually get to a point sometimes that a player will just start traveling because they just totally get lost in their moves or they will just dribble the ball off their foot. There's a few different options, but you can really keep it super simple. Now, if a player is playing straight behind you, trying to literally push you out of the key, maybe you're a bit taller than them, they're a bit stronger maybe, and you're taller, they just don't want you to score easily. At that point, that's when you can have fun. And I love it when players are trying to play aggressive with me down in the low post. I'm only six foot two, but I can really bang around down here. I played low post until I was later in high school. And when it comes down to it, you wanna keep your dribbles to one or two dribbles. You don't wanna go past one or two. And then when it comes down to it, all you can do is simple, drop your foot, drop your shoulder. Don't go and really drop it. You wanna have your shoulder in line with that foot. And at that point, when they drop off, that's when you can really see the different options that you have. 
So for example, when you get this ball, and you're about here, and you go and shoulder into your defender, if he starts to move back just slightly, let's say a foot, you can turn back around and take that shot. Again, you don't need to have anything super complicated when it comes to low post moves. You can do another move where you can really bang into your defender and if he's still playing tight, he didn't back up, now because he's going to be onto his heels, what you can do is just a quick spin and you're at the basket. You can also do what's called a drop step, which means that, hey, if he's playing you really tight and you're a lot stronger and bigger, you can drop your foot, bounce that ball with two hands. The ball's kind of slippery this morning, it's kind of cold, but from there, you've now backed your, your defender up, you now did a power dribble, you've dropped, you've pushed him back with your butt, and you're at the rim again. Now there's a lot more and more complicated moves than what I just showed you here. However, these are some of the basics that you can use and that everyone uses, even NBA players use these same moves. From there, what about face-up moves? When you're in the low post and you get that ball and you face your defender, well now you're essentially able to drive on him either way. You could do one dribble, hook shot in the middle. There's a whole bunch of different options that you have. However, one really good option that you have is when you get this ball and you face up, what you wanna do is jab, see if he can really move sideways. Now this is if they give you room. If they're giving you a foot of space, you can jab, keep it really close to your body. If he moves sideways, that's when you can do a one dribble, hop, get on two feet, it's more powerful, and then you can go up. Now if he's playing you super close, super tight, and you wanna do a face up move, another one you could do is when you get this, you do a reverse pivot, you keep the ball close to your chest, you keep it close to your core, move your head around, use your head to clear out your defender. So basically what you're gonna do is to keep it close, clear out that defender, and then when you do that, you can jab, and then you can attack that side, using your upper body and your head to be able to move that defender out of the way. Generally considering most refs don't call that a foul or an offensive foul, you should be fine. I hope that this video helps you in the low post. If it does, hit that like button and subscribe and I'll see you guys again next time.